G'day, I'm Warwick Schiller and today I want to talk to you a little bit about a polyvagal view on desensitizing. So recently I did a video on the science of connection and it was about polyvagal theory. And so polyvagal theory uh, is about the nervous system of your horse and so or any mammal really but you've got the sympathetic nervous system which is your accelerator that that activates things okay that gets energy that gets action you've got that and then you've got the parasympathetic nervous system which is the braking system and what polyvagal theory is about is is about poly meaning more than one vagal meaning vagus nerve um, and your vagus nerve is basically the super, neural superhighway that goes between your gut, your heart, and your brain. What you doing there, Holdy? It goes between your, your gut, your heart, and your brain. And there's two types. Oh, so the, the, uh, the, sorry, the parasympathetic nervous system is the braking system. It slows everything down. So the sympathetic nervous system speeds things up. It activates things. The parasympathetic nervous system slows things down. But the thing you have to understand is there's two types of brakes that the parasympathetic nervous system has. There is the, what they call a dorsal vagal complex and the ventral vagal complex. You don't really have to worry about the technical terms, but the dorsal one is about immobility. Okay, so when your horse is standing still, grazing, standing still, napping, standing still, hanging out with his friends or laying down on the ground, that one is engaged, that, that immobility break is engaged softly. But if a horse, say a horse uh, gets really wound up or is really scared or whatever, and flight or fight doesn't work, then that, that brake gets shoved on really, really hard and they become immobile. And that's when you get that freeze response. Okay, so that's one sort of brake. The other brake is the social engagement brake. And the social engagement brake, it slows things down, down from <clears throat> from what the, the, the therapist would call attunement, okay, which a friend of mine named Sarah Schlotte, she's a uh, trauma therapist, she says attunement is the sense of being seen, being heard, feeling felt and getting gotten, okay, it's being understood, your point of view being understood. And so if you think about those two, one is like the, this brake right here, one like the, uh, you know, what we call the handbrake in Australia, they call the emergency brake in America, really it should be put on when you've already come to a stop okay that's the the mo for the most part that's when you use it so that's what that one is but it also can be used in, in an emergency and you can really jam it on and then the other brake is like this brake here to which means it should be applied when you just want to slow things down you know you don't it's not necessarily about stopping you could slow down and come to a stop with that brake or you could just slow down, but it's all about, so there's two different brakes and you really want, need to understand those brakes if you are going to understand what you're doing if you're gonna desensitize a horse. And, and why do we need to desensitize horses? And I'll even get into the term desensitizing here in a minute. But the reason we need to, let's not think about we need to desensitize and we need to make sure we can put the brakes on, okay? You, horses are large animals and if they are, activated or worried or engaged, you know, active, let's call it activated, energetic, that's anxious energy when you're around them, it's very hard to do anything, it can be quite dangerous. So we have to get those horses to where they can stand still while we do things. How we go about doing that, how we go about making them not worried about things is really important you understand how it works. And so today I'm gonna to give you a little demonstration with my trusty blue friend here. And I'm gonna go through some some techniques that people would use to desensitize a horse to something. And let's say we're gonna desensitize our horse here, my trusty horse here, to this flag. And I'm gonna start old school and I'm gonna go all up, all the way up to the stuff I'm on about nowadays. And so I'm gonna start really old school and I've never done it this way, but this is the way it used to be in the past, is you take your horse and you tie him to a post an unbreakable post with an unbreakable lead rope with an unbreakable halter, and then you put hobbles on all four feet so he can't move. And then you take your flag and you wave it all over him and he, initially he rears up and pulls back and falls down and does all sorts of stuff. And so this is very old school and I don't really think anybody does it like this anymore, but it has been done in the past. And so you do that and it doesn't matter what they do, you just keep flapping this. And the end result is your horse stands perfectly still and you can take this 
flag and wave it all over them. What you've done right there, so what, you know, because that horse's ability to flee or fight were taken away, he try, well, he tries to flee, he can't flee, he tries to fight, he can't fight. So then those horses will go into shutdown mode. They call it tonic immobility. And so that's the, that's the dorsal brake and it is pulled on really tight, okay? It is jammed on and they are basically frozen. Um, what will tend to happen with horses if you do that with them is at some point in time during their riding career or whatever, they come out of that frozen. And there's a really good book about trauma called Waking the Tiger by a fellow named Dr. Peter Levine. And in that he talks about uh, it, uh, like surgeons who are in say the Vietnam War, things like that. And they've talked about those soldiers and the saying is, as they go in, so they come out. And they mean like if, if they're screaming and carrying on when you, when you put them out to operate on them to fix whatever they got going on. When they come out of that anesthesia, they come out exactly the same way. And in that book, he talks about a video that's on YouTube and there were some guys tagging polar bears in the Arctic and they would shoot him with a tranquilizer dart out of a helicopter. And you see the bear running along and then he goes to sleep. They land the helicopter and they tag the bear. But when the bear comes out of that immobility, he's laying on his side and as he's starting to wake up, he starts running as he's waking up because when he went into that state he was running and he came out of that state so if you think about a horse that you tied to a post and hobbled their legs and waved this all over them and they're freaking out and trying to get away from it they end up locking up and just going inside but at some point in time when they come out of that who knows when it's going to be you'll tend to get the same reactions you would have had there so that's not recommended but i'm just telling you that that one only uses the dorsal brake complete dorsal brake now the next one you could do and i've never really been a fan of this one either it's somewhat similar but it's one step closer to being nicer to your horse your horse is not tied up and so you've got your horse on a lead rope okay i'm going to tie a little short lead rope on my horse here so you've got your horse here on a bit of a lead rope and it's quite similar to where you're standing here and you bring this thing around start waving it and they start running around in circles okay and your horse is running around in circles and the whole time he's running around in circles you've just got the this thing's this just chasing him around and at some point in time he will stop and freeze and then you take the the flag away this one is somewhat similar to the other one except there's one little difference is when they freeze or when they stop you take the flag away so you actually said hey i at least noticed enough when you stopped whereas in the previous one where they tied them to the post they tend to do this and even when they stop they'll just keep going and so in this case you would mostly be engaging that dorsal brake that emergency brake they come to a freeze but taking that flag away at the end you'll get a slight little bit of credibility in social equity and the more social equity and that attunement you can build up the more the brakes come on but you're not going to get much out of that one then the next one is what I used to do all the time. So I would start, say, here with my flag, and I'd bring it around. And let's say I got to here, and that bothered this horse enough, it would start to move. Now, it might move in slow circles. It's not freaking out and running around, because in the first one, we bought the flag, and when the horse freaks out and runs, the flag still keeps coming till it catches up to him. Okay? This one, you bring the flag around, and say you get to here, and the horse starts to move, what I would do then is keep the flag the same distance from the horse and follow the horse around, not making it any closer or any further away, and follow the horse around and when he comes to a stop I then take it away. And I've used that one a lot over the years and it works really, really well. Horses don't do that coming out of the, um, they don't do that coming out thing like they do in that first instance. But and so the reason they come to a stop is, once again, this emergency brake gets put on, but you, you get quite a bit of the social engagement brake because you start moving the flag and as soon as they move, you stop moving the flag closer. So you're saying, I saw your threshold. I noticed your threshold. I didn't keep getting closer. Okay, so you get some social engagement brake there and they're moving around and they come to a stop. You then take it away. You're also getting some social connection you say hey i saw when you got concerned and i saw when you got over your concern even though it is a little bit of a freeze and at, at that that's probably the most 
common one you see maybe the one before that people do a little bit still these days but that one there works quite well if you just want an obedient horse the next step would be i'm going to bring the flag around let's say i get to this point here and the horse moves as he moves i'm going to take the flag away and as you take the flag away he's still moving and then he might move a quarter of a circle and then come to a stop so that stop had none of this in it there was no there was no freeze in that stop he's like you notice when I got concerned and you took the thing away when I got concerned. Well, that's interesting. So that's, there's quite a bit of social engagement break there. It's almost all social engagement break there. Um, and you might say, wouldn't that teach them to, to move if you take the flag away when they move? And so this is where your timing's got to be good. If you take the flag away as they go from standing still to moving, you're basically saying, I saw the instant you moved. Whereas if you bring the flag up and they move around and you were to follow them for a circle and then while they're still moving you take the flag away, that would be teaching them to move when you take the flag away. And if you're thinking it would teach them to move when you take the flag away, I used to think that too until I learned how to do that well. So that one there has got a lot of social engagement break, but you do go over what they call threshold, meaning you bring the flag around, you get to a point where the horse feels the need to move, a bit concerned. But you do say, I saw your concern. The next level up from that would be and this is where it's this is where you get all this is what i've been doing lately and, and i just cannot believe how well this works and how much connection it creates so the next one would be you start to bring the flag around now let's let, well let's go back to the last one let's say you brought it around from here to here and you got to here and they moved you take it away okay that one's good but then what you do the next time is i know that if i get to here to this point the horse will move so i'm going to start here and i'm going to watch and usually sorry back up a little bit usually when you're doing all those other ones the previous ones you're looking at the body and the feet and you're waiting for the feet to stop moving okay so now we're going to go to we've brought it around and he moved so you take it away to tell him hey i saw the fact that concerned you now one step further along from that is you start here and you know when you get to there he's going to move so you start from here and you start heading towards that spot and you watch their heads head eyes ears mouth and what will tend to happen somewhere in here their head will start to raise up very very slightly or their eyes will stop blinking or one of those things and when they do you stop but you don't take it away you just wait there so it's not close enough to make a move it's close enough to make them feel I'm mm, not sure about that and then because you stopped as soon as their tension started to rise you wait and what they'll do is they'll they'll be a little bit frozen and you just wait and they'll turn and look at it and as soon as they look at it you then take it away and so that one it probably works the absolute very 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 best at really creating connection plus getting them good with this and then you um, you know then you bring it around and what will tend to happen so that it goes away when they mentally engage with it if you think about this example when they mentally engage with it, it goes away. So pretty soon you go to bring it around and all they want to do is like, oh, what's that? And then you get to where you can rub it all over them and they're good with it. And so if you think about all of those different scenarios, at the end of all the scenarios, the brakes were on. The horse was standing still and we can wave the flag all over them and they're not moving. But they're all completely different sets of brakes. And I'm not saying, well, apart from the first one, I'm not saying anybody that uses these different types of brakes is doing a, a bad job or anything it's just i think it's just important you understand why is your horse standing still is your horse standing still because he's got a little bit of freeze or is he standing still because he's completely relaxed and the the one i said i used to use a lot like i'll recap it again got my horse here bring my flag around and if he starts to move i'll just keep it at the same distance and follow him around until he stops and take it away that one works really well but there is a little bit of freeze involved in the stopping and it doesn't affect your desensitizing it doesn't affect them worrying about stuff but what i have found is doing a lot of your groundwork what are you trying to do a lot say in your groundwork you're trying to get your horse to be bendy and what causes them to not bend is tension and so you can do that one but then you've got to be really really good at training horses to bend their bodies and you've got to be really good at all the the technical stuff in order to overcome what you've put in there just by getting them to stand still that way and it took me many years to figure that out but now that i've got that figured out it's it's yeah it's just amazing that um once you work on them that way and they 
all that stiffness is them mentally leaving. If you can keep them thinking over here, you ask them to do things and they just go around. They've got the perfect bend in their body, the perfect bend in their axis up here, the perfect bend in their ribs, that inside hind foot steps up underneath them. And uh, it just makes it all easy. So I just wanted to get you guys to really think about if you, if you do any desensitizing. And, and desensitizing is not structured desensitizing. It's not like, oh, I'm going to get this horse good with this flag. If you were to go to put the saddle on, and let's say you, well, let's say you put the saddle pad on, and the horse is standing still, but their head's going up a bit, you might just wait and not do anything until they relax. And then you could either go and get the saddle, or you could take that saddle pad off and put it back on again. So it's, it's just in your everyday, everyday interactions. And if you can just be, just make this a habit of being aware of that rising tension and let them know you see that rising tension. Not only does the tension not rise, but you just build up a lot of, you build up a lot of trust from them. And I saw a quote on Facebook this morning. It's a picture of a horse walking across a bridge over a river. And it said something like, a horse will cross any bridge if that, as long as the first bridge you build is the trust between you and him or something quite sappy like that. But I'm really starting that, you know, like I said, it sounds a bit sappy, but as I'm getting further and further into this stuff, it really is making a huge difference about how easy they are to do things with. If you've watched the videos lately of my, um, my yearling, you know, the first time I went to load him on the trailer, he just climbed on and I'd, I'd, he'd never been near the trailer before because you keep that curiosity instead of developing that fear. So just something for you guys to think about anytime you are desensitizing or well, actually I'll talk before we go, I'll talk a bit about that. I really don't think, you know, desensitizing is getting them to not react to this thing. I think that those last techniques I talked about there is it's not getting them to not react to it, it's getting them to mentally engage with it. You know, when they freeze, they tend to, tend to mentally disengage. And so it's not, I wouldn't even call the, those, probably the last two techniques I mentioned there, I probably wouldn't even call them desensitizing because you are not desensitizing them to it. You are not getting them to not pay attention to it. You're getting them to pay attention to it in a socially connected way rather than in a worried sort of a way. So just something to think about if you're doing any desensitizing or the next time you're working with your horse. Hope that helps. See you guys next time. Rum, rum.